Cool, I start. Awesome. So hello everyone. Uh, this is chapter 20, 28. Uh, we'll discuss today um, some R functionality that doesn't mentioned in, in the book particularly. So it may be useful for someone that, that do heavy R programming. Uh, could be could be useful could be useful also for if you are um, like programming a package or something. So this uh this chapter is particularly new I think, uh in the second uh, edition, um and uh, this again with the introduction. So to this section uh to finish this like this is the first the third. Yeah, we will finish the book after two chapters. Uh, after this one, so he says this is a good place uh, to remind you that the tidyverse is not the only way to solve data science problems. Uh, we teach the tidyverse in this book because um, tidyverse packages share a common design philosophy, increasing the consistency across functions and making each new function or a package a little bit easier to learn and use. Um. So it's possible to use tidyverse without using base R. So we have actually already taught you a lot of base R functions from library to load package uh, packages to some mean uh, other function as well uh, to factor date and uh, POSIX, POSIX, POSIX uh, data types. And of course, all the basic operators, uh, all these operators we all know them. Uh, what we, what you haven't focused on so far is the base R flow flow. So we will highlight, uh, so this chapter will highlight how we could uh, develop using base R workflow. Um, after easy book, you will learn other approaches to solve a problem with, with base R. Um, there is a data table, which is already no, new, very known and um, known in, uh, in the community of R. Uh, that is very fast, faster than Tidyverse, uh, but it's not verbose as as Tidyverse, um, um, or or not Tidyverse uh, deployer. I think uh, you will undoubtedly encounter these other approaches when you start reading our code written by others, uh, particularly if you are using the you are using Stack Overflow to solving problem, and we all does. So uh, it's 100% okay to write code that uses a mix of approaches and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Okay, so it's, it's just an opinion. So uh, it doesn't matter what, what you're actually using, at least um, since you are just solving your problems and uh, in your own way. So it doesn't have to be multi-diverse. You can use anything. Um, so in this chapter, we focus on like big topics of so, so like subsetting with this brackets syntax and subsetting with uh this bracket sent or the brackets syntax uh the the dollar sign and the apply func uh, family of functions and this uh, and also we will discuss four which is we we asked for it uh in the last chapter but we didn't see it uh since there is change so I think they moved it to this chapter uh, to discuss all over what like the basic R functionality in in its own chapter. So uh, I think that's a good thing to do. And uh, finish off with briefly discuss essential plotting functions. So yeah, let's begin. And yeah, selecting multiple elements with this bracket syntax, this square bracket syntax. So square brackets is used to, sub, to extract subcomponent from vectors and data frame, and it's called like uh, x i or x i and j. X i and j uh, is like a matrix uh, kind of thing. Uh, to a vector with two, um, like two, uh, what's called uh, directions, um, or called two. Uh, two vectors. This one looks like Python, right? So, so, so setting. <laughs> yeah, it's like an array or a list. Yeah. Uh, getting like some elements from the list. Uh -huh. same, same as Python. I think it's the same uh, like uh, structuring or uh, the way that you're getting elements from. Uh, sorry, mm -hmm. So, in this, I want to introduce your power of bracket. Okay. 
first showing you how you can use it in, with vectors. So subsetting vectors, uh, let's begin with subsetting vectors. There are five main types of things we, you can subset. Uh, uh, the form B, uh, the I in the, the XI. So yeah, uh, you unmuted the Shams. Okay, okay. Awesome. Uh, so a vector, a vector of positive vector integers. Um, so basically, if you have um, a list of um, yeah, so positive vectors, keeps the element at those positions. So if you have the position, the a vector which is one, two, three, and five to five, and it's a string, uh, you can. You can subset this this string by using another combination or the combined uh, operator or functions uh, that we use, but with positive numbers that each one refers to the position of um, the position of the um, uh, the element. So the three uh, the three here referring referring to the three uh, into uh, string. Two is referring to two, one is referring to one. So three to five, we will get three to five. So it's just it's like um, mapping between how you could subsetting using just multi like so um, getting so just selection in tidy bus select. Yeah, yeah. So you know, in select in tidy bus also you can just say um you can just select by number positions you can just say select. Yeah, it's the same, yeah, yeah. Same yeah. now. It was different syntax, um, and I think this is uh, this is particularly expected because uh, it's the same uh, kind of way to uh, that that uh, the R designed this way. That's why Tidyverse uh, like implemented the design, but the very but the, but be but it became very specific and verbose more to make you very uh, to make it easier for you. Uh, to handle this kind of uh, uh, subsetting uh, functionality. But yeah, so by repeating a position, if you repeat the position, you can actually make a longer output and input, making a term of subsetting. Um, so you, if, if you repeat it one, one, same thing, uh, we just, uh, just a mapping uh, between, uh, we, we just getting the element with a map. Um, so a vector of his negative numbers, and negative numbers. So oh yeah, I, I, I forget to say that you are the first position is the one, not like arrays in uh, in Python or um, like uh, the index is beginning with one, not like uh, in Python is zero. So you will begin with one, two, three until five. That's why it's a it's a, it's the same mapping. So you see here if you go to the negative part. You begin with the negative one, which is the, the last one. The last one is the negative one. So uh, negative values drop the elements at the specified positions. So yeah, uh, so negative here. Yeah, I didn't know that. Uh, it's, it, it, it drop the values. And I think this is ex exists also in, uh, uh, in tidyverse select, right? Yeah, in tidyverse select, if you put negative value, it drops. Yeah, same functionality. Um, so yeah, this minus one, we put, we, uh, we dropping the ones of dropping the three and the five, we begin, we, which remain is, uh, two and four. Um, so digi logical vectors, we talked about logical vector before, subsetting with logical vector keep values corresponding to a true value. Uh, the, uh, this is most often useful in conjunction with comparison function. Uh, when you have a vector with, 10, 3, and a, n, a, 5, 8, 1, and a. Uh, all non missing values of x, um, you can select it with using this. Yeah, this is it's the same logic as select, um, just not not missing. So it's just not missing. It will get true if it's, if it's uh, if true. If it's false, uh, it will get false. Um, so yeah, the, the 10 is not missing. Three is not missing. Uh, five, uh, it will like um, the like ignore it, ignore the the vector which is 
So basically it's applying the filter functionality where you just, uh, uh, if this expression is true, you will get the element. So 10, three is true, NA is false, five, eight, and one is true, NA is false. So that's why we get all just the, those five, those five elements. Um, now it's again, same as selecting the even numbers, where's the even, it's just an a then the the even number of the of uh, of the eggs I think this one yeah uh, just the even number and we have the, just two even number and n a since it's uh, uh, unlike filters n a indices will included in the output as n a so it doesn't recognize n a as a number but it doesn't also recognize it as um, like other than a number. So it's, it's just lifted uh, as it is um, and filter others. And this is not like filters. Filters like you can like uh, declude or uh, declude the, delete the, the NAs from the output. Um, and yeah, so a character vector, uh, if if you have a name vector, you can subset it with a, uh, with a character vector. And character vector, um, you see here if it's a, if it's a one and as a two and the C and the five, these are the uh, the vectors that we are defining. It's like a variable, uh, like a set of subset of variables or uh, a combination of variables. You can select with using names, uh, for like with the corresponding uh, value using uh, the combination it's the same yeah same as uh, selects uh, in tidyverse the very same uh, nothing the final type of subsetting is nothing which returns a complete x so if you if you give it a free brackets x right bracket and close the bracket with a three inside it uh nothing inside it you will get like all the x values which is um, a little bit tricky because it's in other programming languages like Python. We this is allowed and we get error an error syntax error because you don't have what what you are selecting from the element itself. Um, so this is not useful for substituting vector, but we will see shortly it 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 is useful when substituting two D vector uh, structures like tuples. So yeah, substituting data frame now we go we move to data frame from vector to data frame. Uh, here's a couple of examples. This is a tuple with an X and Y and Z, um, multiple elements and multiple values for each one. This is the one for three sequence. This is the combination of characters. Uh, run, run if it's a, I think it's a function. Um, it's in a, like, uh, is, it, is it like a uniform? What is, what is it called? Uh, Run f I run down numbers. I think uh, you know, numbers? Something, something. yeah, yeah. From the number if it's until three or something like that. Um, yeah, I think something like. So yeah, yeah, you can. Um yeah. So we're selecting the rows. If you if you want selecting yeah, this is select the first row and second column, first column and second first row and second column. Yeah. Uh, since it's a uh, treated like a matrix. First row is the first uh, value is the first row, and the second value is a, is a is a number. Yeah, the number of row is the first value, and the number of column is the second value. So when you use a bracket, you will you say that it is first the uh, it's like a matrix uh, in uh, in Python also. It's uh, it's like an array, uh, but it's um, you selecting the first row and the second column, which is is uh, is uh, is y. I think the value is um, is a is is a. I think the value is a. So you see it. You see all of them. So it's x, x is one, two, three. Yeah, and y is a, b. E, yeah. So the, y is the uh, the second column, and uh, the first row is um, is a. So it's just a corresponding value to. Uh, uh, to to the matrix, 
uh, result also setting value uh, setting uh, selection. So, okay, now select all row and columns in X and Y. How we do that? Using what's called uh, I, I don't I don't say I know its name, but it's um it's kind of uh, you selecting all since we said that providing nothing, you are saying all, so. Providing nothing here, you say all of, uh, and I think this is exists in pandas. I think also same way. If you uh, if you left it uh, empty, you will say it to select all. So empty in the first value is saying all select all the rows, and uh, in the in the in the column value select x and y. So we're getting all rows in x and y. Okay. Um, here in the set in the um, selecting row where x is greater than all the columns, how we do that? Just specifying a condition or a, or a, a factor, uh, and the condition itself is a uh, is a boolean, and uh, you, you say that in in df if x is more is bigger than one, then this is true. And if true, it's, uh, it's, it's getting the it's just uh, getting all the rows that specifying this criteria, and loop it through or have include it all in all columns. And so we give it a free uh, or a nothing uh, value here uh, in in the column uh, um, in the column space uh, in the column uh, position. So we said that. Just select all the rows, uh, all the columns that specify, and all the rows that specify this kind of uh, uh, filter. And if you see here, we said uh, it's bigger than one. We get two and three, and all the rows of it. So the column itself, it uh, the rows itself. Um, so yeah, it's it just uh, because it's the one. We get it the bigger the, the one, and then selecting all the rows that specify the same criteria, and which is uh, the, the second and third row. So we're getting all of them uh, that specify this criteria. Now, let's go. We'll come back to uh, the dollar sign previously, the shortly, but let's, let's get into, into more um, of practice. So there is an important difference between tipple and data frames. Uh, when it comes to brackets, using brackets. In this book, we have mainly using tipples, which are data frames, uh, but they tweak some behaviors to make your life a li little easier. Um, and in most places, you can use tipple uh, and, and data frame interchangeably. Uh, again, it's talking about R uh, or Pidiverse, sorry. Uh, so you can use tipple and data frame interchangeably if you're using Pidiverse. So when we, we want to draw a particular attention to our built-in data frame, we will write data dot frame. And this is a structure we, we should use. Um, if df is a data data dot frame and the df is this kind of subset where this is kind of subsetting, we're selecting all the rows and the specific columns, uh, this will return a vector uh, if, if a column selects a single column and uh, a data frame if it uh, if it select more than one column so yeah it, like we said yeah this is one of the problem i you know encountered where i was working with somebody that is writing his data from using df using data frame i'm, I'm always using table so this um you know was generating a lot of we don't understand what is happening because nothing works from his end end it was but if i'm using so it turns out this is what is happening so this is really tricky. Um, yeah, this um, this. Yeah, uh, but I think I think also it's um, uh, it's because of the, it's it's a base R and this is designed to do to more the uh more towards the mathematics part and how to deal with matrices and all this kind of vector realm. It's saying uh, it, since it's designed for them or the mathematicians and statistical analysis. Uh, this is normal for statistical analysis um, workflow. Uh, the metrics, the metrics, and uh, knowledge of the metrics and uh, arrays and vectors and 
this kind of stuff it's normal to them that's why it's it's good you will find a lot that use this kind of um, of syntax more than tidyverse because it's uh, it's easier for them because they have the knowledge itself uh, to 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 use this than tidyverse which is verbose um, so yeah you will find both um, but it's, it's depend on, depending on the your background uh, I, and I see I see people that have is this that have statistical background or mathematical background that use this a lot in their uh academic uh studies or uh papers but most of the time um people that doesn't have this kind of background it, it will go with tidyverse um and tidyverse for also because it's easy um uh, and intuitive to uh, think about everything in tidyverse uh, world um yeah, it could be tricky for for that for the people that doesn't have this the kind this kind of background. Um, yeah. So, yeah, this will return a vector of columns. So, yeah, we said that. Uh, if df is a tuple, then the bracket will always return a tuple. So let's say we have a data frame of x with sequence from x to, uh, from one to uh, to three. Now, if you select in the X, we said that all select all the rows uh, in the X column, you're getting all the rows in the in the in the in the X column. Uh, now in the tuple, it's it's different since you are if, if you said the same thing. Uh, oh, oh yeah, so here you're getting like the values as um as a sequence. It's not like presentable enough. Uh, if you if you want to see what is the type, how is this organized in the uh, in the number? So it, if if this value is twenty two to uh one hundred, for example, uh, you don't know what is the number of the rows itself. So how many like the differences between the uh what's the difference between uh data frame and uh tuple? That's what he tried to invent here. Uh, so it's so you see here that it doesn't have any kind of information about the value. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It just yeah. yeah. And, and here you 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 provided with the, the metric yeah. class. Um. So, like, so the problem I was telling you, um, yeah. If you you know you are doing the programming and the the next input maybe your data frame output is to input to another one. So if it is in tuple, you see the structure will accept if it is data from So the next, uh, where you want to input the data, you should know like whether you are using tuple or data from because the, the format is different. Yeah, it's very different. And uh, and I think tuple make it very easy like Panda's uh, data frame. And I think it's, it's more like tuple. The Panda's data frame is more like tuple than the data frame that Exactly. Exactly. They are. Uh, that's why it's more intuitive for people to go to people more than yeah, uh, yeah, using the different frame. But again, uh, with 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 a lot of power that come a lot of friends, uh, come a lot of friends, uh, responsibility, and there is a lot of power in people, but same, but still, it's uh, it's consuming a lot of uh, resources. Yeah, and, but. Well, what I was thinking, like almost all people, the experiment you do, um, I think the the resources at this very point, resources are too much. Like you can use your like your computer sixteen gig, thirty two gig. In terms of resources, this is nothing, right? Um, yeah, I was... yeah. I think it's um, uh, it's more that the, the if you have a project that really dependent on its performance, then you can focus on. So how how we could how we should begin using the syntax over this syntax. So you prefer if you to work if you have this kind of very sophisticated system that really depend on the performance, you will probably go with data frame than people because it's um it's a base R, it's more than and the data table itself, I think it's data table is best the better. Yeah, the... I agree with you. Yeah, I agree with you. If you are using a big data set, you know, you, you need to do that. I agree with yeah. you. Yeah. Um so 
cool. Uh, let's go into, yeah, one way to avoid this ambiguity with data frame is to explicitly specify the drop. Um, the drop equal false explicitly. So it, it kind of gave it a structure, but still it's not like having any information. So uh, I think it's the same. Uh, it doesn't, like, uh, doesn't add anything else. Now, let's go to deployer equivalent. So we know the player in Stellarverse, how, how we could do the same, the same as we're doing is that you know, when, when using the player and, uh, uh, and, and the function of the, in the pliers. Uh, the function, the, the filter function is equivalent to subsetting the, the, the total, this is just, we talked about this uh, before, uh, the rows with a logical vector taking care of to exclude missing values. Same, we're getting, um, we're constructing a, a tuple where you're having the combination of values and the lit, lit some letters and a random number if in in function uh in five uh and now we get in the filter we want to be doing some filtering on values of x that bigger than one just values of x and visual one we can specify the same functionality but with less code less verbose code using the data frame as this. Now, the subsetting, we say that, okay, on, on the, this all, this is on the row side. Now, you have to be careful when you do this. This is the row side and this is the column side. So you have to be careful. Now we're working only on the row side. So we say that, uh, and here also vector, the filter is doing the same, just operating on the rows not the columns uh and that that's that's how we differentiate between it and the select and all other functions but here in this in the base are we using the same kind of functionality but uh, with more more uh complex structure like if it's um now we said that is if it's not in a gets the x if it's not in a and if uh, or uh, yeah, and if uh, this is X. So if it's not in A, um, leave it as it is. And if it's if it's uh, if it's true, if it exists, leave it as it is. So yeah, it's you yeah, um, try to specify both this uh, to to this expression to this Boolean expression to become true, which have to be this it's have to be exist as an uh, as a, a value and it has to be not in a uh, so um you can see in deployer we have only one argument like filter x get other it's called um so but in the one this one below we need to remove uh check sure that it's not any but in deploy we don't do that right yeah because it's i think it's filtered it's, it's removing any inside of it um in behind the scenes you don't need to tell it to to, re, to remove it, and that's what's uh, mentioned before. What the difference between filter and subsetting? So here, because we are selecting using subsetting, we have to remove in a manually, or it else it will come with the uh, with the output. Um, and that's why we specifying here is okay. Uh, specify this condition if uh if this condition is true. Um, so it, both of them have to be true, then take this condition and uh, it has to be exist or not in A, then if it, it has to be b bigger than one. If, if all of this are true, then um, select this row, specific row. Again, com some complex complex structure, but if you used to this one, this kind of structure, you will have, write a really, a really like, complex code and it will not be readable if you're not used to this kind of uh, way of doing things but in programming and also in python uh, you will find this uh, particularly normal uh, if you use pandas also uh, you'll find this again uh, filtering inside pandas data frame same thing i think it's, uh, uh, just do the same thing as this uh, data frame uh, structure uh, but the formatting is better, of course. Uh, 
that's why I said uh, in the beginning, uh, the tuple is more than uh, the, the, the output of the tuple is the same as the band of the plane, um, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, this another common technique in the while to use the uh, which uh, and the which function uh, for its side effect of, of dropping missing values. Which function is dropping the file, the dropping any value that is not null. I think not the dropping the missing values. So if in if it find in a drop it uh, uh, automatically. This kind of functionality is though is, is is done by that as we said before is done by default in filter function, but we have to use another function here to do the side effecting of dropping missing values, and then uh, provide it with it uh, with um, with a uh, with a filter that we want, which is x uh, bigger than one. Um, awesome. Now. The arrange is equivalent to subsetting the rows with an integer va a vector, usually created with order. Now let's see where we are. Yeah. Um. So let's let's uh, try to make it very with her. Okay. So the arrange function. Oh yeah. So arrange function is the same as the order function. We we try to replace the arrange with the order, um. But with the order function. You can use the order function because uh, in the decreasing to sort all columns in descending order or uh, or the rank column to sort the column in decreasing uh, order individually. So you just specify uh, if it's ascending order or descending order. Um, and um, in the order function, you specify the, the X and Y and get it. You, it yeah, it's the same behavior. Uh, it's equivalent to order. But the same behavior, but we use it with data frame other than uh, use it with a tuple, uh, arrange with a tuple. Now, both select and re relocate uh, are similar to subsetting the column with a vector, with a character vector. Uh, here is, is, we select an X and Z. Now, here is selecting a combination of column names, X and Z, in the um, column space or side of the data frame and we we leave uh we leave the um, the row side empty or not uh to to get the to get all the rows now bazar also provide functions that combine the all feature filter and select called subset and the subset is getting the same as combination of filter and select which is very useful i think this one is very useful the function was the inspiration for much of the flyer syntax, so get, they getting uh, uh, an inspiration of this one um, from this one, uh, and apply it on uh, the flyer functions uh, in how to describe functionality or uh, doing some kind of uh, manipulation of data. Yeah, uh, this is in the filter and select. So yeah, same. Okay. Mm. Doing the same as both together. Mm. So you're just filtering the with the filter. You give it a filter and give it what you want to select after the after you do filter. Uh, so you want to you want to select Y and Z. So you give it a combination of Y and Z. Um, so yeah, this is this is done by on a data frame, not a, in a tuple. Um, I don't know if it's if there is there some some kind of equivalent to this in the player. I don't think so. But um, since it's the player, you you could use this. Uh, it's more verbose. I think they don't. Need, yeah, yeah. So they, you don't need to. That's why it's. There <laughs> but if it's more verbose, but it's more intuitive to me. <laughs> yeah, in, in the frame itself, it's uh, it's more intuitive to do this. But in the in the uh, in the deployer or in the tidyverse, this is most more makes sense more. Now. Okay, let's go to the selecting single element with with uh, this dollar sign and uh, double brackets. So, okay, so the dollar elements, okay, let's go into this one. So double bracket and, and, um, and the dollar sign can be used to extract column out of the data frame and double bracket can access by position or by name 
and dollar sign is specified for access by name. Same as I think the same as uh Python I think, um where instead of the dollar sign we use dot in the in this Python, um and you see here is by position we do double brackets to, to select by to selecting by position I think this also exists in uh, in uh, pandas, and uh you you select the position of one then you get the first uh, row which is this values. And if it's if it's by name, you're selecting by the name of the of the column, which is the X. Now you're selecting all uh the column, the X column uh values, which is the same numbers. Uh in the using the the, um, uh, the, the dollar sign to getting the X value in so basically you you're selecting the data uh, uh column from a data frame. This is how we do it. And I think we do this also in our uh, in uh, tidyverse sometimes when we do some kind of selection. So it's not a new thing. And you could use some kind of uh, any kind of operators between two uh, two columns doing this way, operation on two columns, x and y, we're selecting it that way. And we assign it to another column, which is the Z column. If it doesn't exist, we are providing it by using, doing this. So if you have the X and Y and do the and do this kind of operation, now we added a column. This is this is the way you have to create a column, new column to in the base R. Um yeah, same as uh Python as I as well. There are several other base our approaches to creating new column, including transform, with, within. Hadley collected a few examples in this. You can check it out. Um and Using using the door sign directly is convenient when performing the quick summaries. Um, for example, if you uh the for example the biggest uh the biggest diamond or possible values of cut, there's no need to use summarize. So and instead of summarizing, you could do do the um, uh the, like apply the functionality um without using summarize. How, uh, if you use the max, uh, let's say let's let's, let's read it from the beginning. For example, if you just want to find the size of the biggest diamond or possible values of cut, um, there is no need to use summarize. Yeah, there is no need to aggregate, um, or specify an aggregation function. Uh, or sorry, you do doesn't need to have to uh, summarize function. As an intermediate calculation um, function to use, you you can now because you are using like R, which is looking just the column itself. You can apply it, apply a column in the function, and the function itself is designed to work on columns as we know uh, in Bizarre. Uh, so it take a column by by default, and this is exists in tidyverse. Um, in the in the tipple or we do, where we doing piping, this is done uh, in the background already for us, but we don't see this um, when you do when we're using the any tidyverse functions. So uh, you could use it like this manually, uh, and this is the tidy R way of doing things. And the player also provide the equivalent to this in chapter four. We use Paul. Uh, that takes either a variable name or a variable position. This is a variable name, which is like the column name, and then do the max uh, of it. And also there, here's the uh, same way. Give, give the levels of uh, of the cut column uh, again. Now we're using tiples. Uh, there are a couple of important difference between tiple and um, base data frames when it comes to dollar sign, using dollar sign. Now, data frames much match um, uh, the prefix of any variable name, so-called partial matching, and don't complain if a column doesn't exist. So if you, if you start to select a column that doesn't exist, it doesn't complain to you. Um, so here we say select Z and it doesn't exist. It, it, it just return around null and that's it. Here it's giving it as a warning uh, in, when using a tipple. 
uh, when tr trying to select something that doesn't exist. Uh, the less types, um, same as, yeah, uh, are also really important for working with lists, uh, the, bra the dot brackets and dollar sign. And it's important to understand that how they are differ from the one bracket. The difference is, is that the, we're getting the structure, uh, if you get if you get the structure of the of the list uh, of a sequence from our C two, you get this. Uh, if you get the structure of uh, of just one element, you get the same. But yeah, it doesn't matter how many elements you extract; the result will always be a list. So it doesn't re yeah. So I think it's because. Uh, yeah, I don't understand this. It doesn't matter how many elements you extract. Oh yeah, so it doesn't have. It doesn't matter how you extract element. Uh, yeah, the result will always be lists. So, uh, you, for example, yeah, you can see list of two. Um, if you extract one, it's list of one. So even if you extract a lot, it just it will just be lists of lists. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, for example, here you can see the, you know, subset the first one, and now, you know, yeah. Yeah, we're giving the, the sequence. If you give it mm -hmm. a number, it's yes. the same. You, you, yes. You're giving the list of one. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So, later you can subset, yes. Let's move toward, yeah, let's move toward apply family, which is interesting one. That's what I ask. I asked for. Uh, so in chapter twenty-seven, you learn tidyverse techniques. So that really this is it. what we were asking in chapter in last chapter, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so we we talked about in the last chapter uh, about the functional cross and the map family of functions, and you said that we uh you learn about their base equivalent. So this is the base equivalent of a cross uh, function that we talked about. Uh, in this context, we apply and map synchronous uh, synonyms because another way of saying map function over each element of vector is apply function over each element of a vector. So instead of mapping, we say applying. Uh, here we will give you a quick overview of this family. And I see I see this family used a lot in uh, in R code, so I, that's why I get interested in them in the first place. Um, the most important member of family is L apply, which is a very mm -hmm. key bar map we talked about. Uh, in fact, because we haven't used any of maps uh, more advanced feature, you can replace every map uh, call in uh, chapter five in chapter twenty seven with this L apply function. There's no exact base R equivalent to a cross, but you can get close by uh, using the frame, um, um, the bracket with a lap line. So this what we said in the, the hood, um, data frames are less of columns. So calling a lap line on the, in data frames applies, uh, apply the function to each column. Same as, um, but that's what we talked about before. Um, let's say uh, we have a tuple and we want to find first numeric columns. You get this with using S apply, same as across. Uh, if you say, if, if you ask me, uh, yeah, just provide it with um, the function that we wanted to apply to everyone, to every column uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the data frame. And it gets this values. Like you see here, it's, of course, it's because it's this in your is numeric it's returning a boolean to a false, you're getting these values. Now, transform each values column with ill apply, then replace the original values. Let's see. So it doesn't explain the s apply. So well, yeah, the code above uses a new function s apply. It's similar to L, yeah, it's similar ill apply, but it always tries to simply simplify the result. Hence, the S in, yeah, simple apply. Simple apply is its name, yes. Yeah. Here is producing a logical vector instead of a list. So instead of the list, it's 
getting a vector. This is is apply. You're turning a vector of uh of the output uh, of the data frame output uh, after you apply the functionality that you want. Now here, if you use the l apply, you're getting a tuple. You getting a tuple, uh, then transform each column with apply, replace the original values. Uh, this will de de replace the original values with uh, this expression. Uh, awesome. Yeah. So it applies like across uh, in so many different ways. Okay, because the simplification can fail and give you an unexpected type, but it's usually fine for interactive use. Per has similar function called Mavic. Yeah. This uh, map, map has a lot of uh, similar stuff that led to this. So obviously, for example, when I'm looking for some problem in R, the, um, I always look at if I want to ask question in maybe Stack Overflow, I always tie debugs because sometimes it result, it gives you <laughs> results in all these S apply and L apply. But now I'm just, I, I need to put uh, tie debugs. Even now with chat GPT, if I have, want to do something, I just say, right, give me tie debugs um, code. Yeah. I don't know if you use chat GPT or you don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I tried a lot. I, and I think it's very intel intelligent uh, especially in the the version four, uh, it's it's just really uh, getting yeah. a, a condensed result, a sophisticated answer that really intelligent. Yeah, uh, and you could use it to your to your uh, to your advantages. Uh, so it's very useful. Yeah, but only is that if someone don't know how a language, for example, now somebody um was using Chat GPT and he didn't know much about R. And now he it, it would give him error, error. So he would spend all his time correcting error and it didn't give him, you know. But if you know what you are doing, then you can, you know, have something better. Yeah. Building upon your knowledge is it's what I, I think is uh, for. Uh, you say about, what? Build, building upon your knowledge. Uh, yes, what, exactly. That's, uh, exactly. that's what exactly. the GPT is best for. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of just knowing and, and also it's, it's good for learning if you if you want to yeah. learn these things uh have some kind of uh, uh because it's, it's it's fed a lot of data in the web and yeah. all this kind of answers and text you can ask it anything but again expect that it doesn't accurate 100 percent exactly so you have to be careful when you depend on uh its answer you have to do your your search also exactly so BASR provides a stricter uh, for version of if apply, which is v apply, uh, short for vector apply. It, uh, it takes an additional argument that specifies expected type, ensuring that simplification occurs the same way regardless of the out is the input. For example, we can replace is apply call above this with v apply. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's apply with getting some errors a lot, uh, some ambiguity results uh, because it's dependent on the input, then they come with uh, the apply uh, uh, to, to make it easier for, our, for others to use it, uh, to, to use the apply functions. Now, another, oh, to, sorry, to, to get the, the vector from, uh, from the data frame uh, in a simpler way. And yeah. So oh, yeah. yes, another important member of the apply family is the apply, which, which computes a single group summary. Um, and you could see here, uh, you could you could apply families. Uh, so unfortunately, the apply returns its result in a named vector, uh, which requires some gymnastic if you want to collect multiple summaries or grouping variables into data frame. Now I see here the limitation of this uh, because it's, uh, I think this is uh, very limited uh, if you want to do heavy stuff uh, because it doesn't know how to like um, to do mass or to do uh, to apply function uh, on multiple uh, column in simple ways that like tiers. Uh, mm. It's really possible to not do this and just work with a free floating vector. But in our experience, that just delays the work. If you want to see how you might use T, T apply or other base techniques to perform other group summaries, Hathi has collected some uh, other some te uh, few techniques in this suggest. Um, final member of 
apply family is apply function. Apply with with nothing with with no prefix, which works with matrices and arrays. In particular, watch out for apply df something which is slow and potentially dangerous. Yeah, now it's a syntax uh, syntax problem and implementation problem we see here. Um, I don't know if it's a, if the new base R having uh, still uh, um, doesn't deprecate this kind of functionality or or not or or, or it's like you replace it with something else because if it's if the same implementation is, exists with the new the, the new version of R, I think they doesn't improve uh, and the, and this is not logical, right? Yeah, yeah. I think it's uh, I think it's more it it could be improved. Uh, could they they could improve it in uh, could be already improved it in the in the new version of R. Um, so yeah, slowing memory. That's my, that's meaning that it's uh it's not efficient algorithm behind the scene, um, and which is slow, potentially dangerous. Doing it apply, okay. There's really coming to data science because we usually work with data frames and not matrices. This really come up, yeah. Uh, we don't use this uh, a lot in uh, in data science uh, framework uh, workflow, so uh, so it's cool. The for loops that we talked already about in the last chapter. So for for loops are fundamental blocking. Uh, yeah, we looping to to the element uh, in a vector in a list, any type of structure that combined with a multiple element, we can loop through it. Uh, the most straightforward use for loops is to achieve the, uh, the same effect as walk, uh, call some function with side effect on each uh, element of the list. Um, and instead of using walk, uh, for example, instead of using walk in this, uh, we talked about this kind of uh, structure, uh, the walk function, we talked about it in the last chapter. And we could have used the for loop instead of walk through this kind of elements and then and append it automatically. This one will, uh, for loop, we will use the append file to do the same for uh, the same way uh, we're using the workflow to append in file together. Now, things get a little trickier if you, if you want to save the output of four, for example, reading all of the Excel files. Um, yeah, uh, I think we, we talked about this in the last chapter. And there are a few different techniques that you can use, but we recommend being explicit about what you are going going, what why you what you uh, what he what the output is going to look like in upfront. Um yeah. I think this is uh, yeah we could we could uh, go through this. So then instead of iterating over the elements of paths uh, we will iterate over the indices uh, using the sequence along to generate one index for each element of the passes. So yeah, this one we could use it uh, to uh, get map pass. Yeah, yeah, map pass to uh, indices and then use this indices in the for loop as uh, as a way we to loop through it and to selecting element through it also here like this. We could select elements in the file. Um, list or uh, vector using the subsetting that we said before. Uh, and also we could use the passes, the passes vector or uh, or list. We could use subsetting also to uh, extract element from it uh, when we loop it. So like this is the first element, second element, and go and so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, to combine the list of tuple into, uh, uh, we can use do call an R bind. I uh, didn't see this a lot, a lot in when you use tuple, so you probably go with uh, 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 other functions to, to combine tuples, like merge or join or so or so or some other function. Um, but yeah, our bind, our, our bind does uh, have to be called inside uh, do call. I think the our bind is a function, and do call is calling that function on this uh, yeah correct yes yes yeah. and rather than making the list saving the result with uh, uh, as we go a simple approach is to build up the, the data frame piece by piece um, and this is 
how you could do it. And this is the normal programming uh, structure, I would say, uh, outside R. Uh, yeah. To, to do things. So you're binding, binding out the out function and then do um, read Excel on each pass. Um, and this is normal. Uh, yeah, so our bind here is it's like appending uh, to the out, uh, out variable and appending all the passes in the out and looping through all uh, all all the pass every pass in passes and then append it to out if and if you see the output you see all um, all the passes move to out um so let's just talk briefly on yeah this is the final thing i think it's just, it's the end of this chapter uh many are users who don't otherwise use the tidyverse um prefer ggplot too for plotting you to, to, to have for feature like sensible default, automatic vision, and modern load. However, bezal plotting function can still be useful because they are so concise. It takes very little typing to, to do basic exploratory data analysis. Uh, you, be, you see here plot and the hist. Hist is getting, yeah, hist is getting the histogram. Uh, this histogram very quick, very, very useful, very, um uh, base say and the block uh function here um uh, since you do you give it two variables it's uh, getting it uh, as a scatter plot um and i think there is a way to uh documentation to to the plot function uh you could see it uh how how you could use it in scatter plot how you could use it as a bar plot uh, a, not much of a, I think the default is a scatter plot. That's how you could, uh, in, and you could add some other configuration or parameter to convert it to other pl uh, plot types. Uh, this exists in, uh, in uh, base R and how you could plotting it in base R without using ggplot too. Uh, but yeah, because of uh, the science work, normal, typical the, the science workflow all, always used uh ggplot2 so you don't need to know this but again if you don't have ggplot2 uh, in some kind of scenario that you have you could use this kind of functionality um so yeah this is the uh, the end of the chapter i hope this was clear enough and i think we we st we, we still have this uh, last two chapters in quarto uh right champs Yes, so I'm not sure because um, uh, Abdul is not here, um, and uh, so I think he is the one to do twenty nine quadro. Um, if he's not available, I'll be able to do that as well. Um, so could could we like yeah? It's I think it's uh, yeah, it's big, right? Sorry, it, it's big, like it's a big chapter, right? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, it's uh it's a twelve it's a workflow yeah it's it's uh, having a lot of uh, yeah yeah of, I can do it yeah I was just checking uh, if the uh, if, if you can combine the two right yeah, combine the two yeah ah, yes let's combine the two I can do them I can combine the two yes yeah it's because it's a qu quarter format is very yeah low, exactly low, and uh, yeah but for the same chapter yeah. basically yeah I can combine the two. So next yeah, week we can finish. Yeah, next week can we can finish, and I think we can move now. Uh, we can stop the recording now. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, let me type stop. Okay.